I, uh, this is a lab to show you about debugging and um, this is a lab about debugging and it's to show you uh, mainly with what you are looking for when you start to debug uh, with this thing. So if you could uh, follow along with me, I'm going to start from scratch in this and you're gonna, I'm going to walk you through this. I assume you know how to set up a project. I'm going to just walk you through really quick with it. So file, new, project. <clears throat> for me, again, I just want to point out, here's your five checkpoints. Win32, make sure it's Visual C++ Win32. Second checkpoint is Win32 console application. I'm just going to call this thing lab. Uh, four underscore uh, my first initial, which I, um, I want to put in here is uh, Vandal. Yours is going to be your four, you know your first initial uppercase, uh, full last name uppercase your first letter. I might have had you know um, a couple of these things in here already, so uh, I'm going to do this just just for the kicks. So you don't you don't do this, but I just put to I was like put. Um, some sort of version um, control with it, so I'm just gonna call V1. Okay, just you don't do this because I have multiple um, versions of this thing. Of course, I have a folder. It's called Sandbox. So um, <coughs> this is where I, you know, just basically uh, store my play files in there with it. So again, checkpoint number one, number two, name of the file um, with it, uh, the location of the file. If you don't have a place, just make sure you click on the browse and point to your local drive and checkpoint number five is disable the create directory for this. Now, this is the first step. The second step is some of you are still not getting is make sure you click on the application settings and make sure you check the empty project, check the empty project. If you don't, uh, make sure you enable it. If you don't, it's going to put in a lot of the header files in there. And once you do that, make sure you click on finish for me. So here's what I like to do. I'm going to uh, right mouse click on the name of the file, uh, my project name. I'm going to add, I want to click on the C++. This first one for this lab, I want you to call this thing. Just call this thing if you want to call it. Um, just for, for the purpose of, of demonstration, we're talking about this. Um, let's see, uh, what do you want to call this thing? My, I think it's variable. That's what I really want to talk to you about to show you what's inside the variables with it. So um, we'll talk about how you want to do the variables and and what's what's actually taking place inside the variables each one of these things so that, um, that when you do a variable so you can see um, what actually takes place in there with it. So I'm going to click on, uh, I'll, I'll call this thing variables. How's that the name of the file with it? Just call it variables. Then I'm going to click on add. Okay. So, um, so what I'm going to do is before we get started on this thing, I'd like for you to, all, on all these labs we're about to do, um, just go ahead and, and if you want, start with your name on here. Put your name. Your full name and then for everyone of the lab make sure you put your course number on this thing as well so 1436 whatever section this may be so you, you start with an 8 whatever it is and then this is definitely for lab uh, number four this is what we're going to do is just give a little bit of description in this case with it so basically you're going to demonstrate uh, the content uh, of the memory um, you're gonna, I'm going to show you how to do breakpoint. I'm going to show you how to navigate in some of the panels that um, actually takes navigations of the auto, uh, what's inside the auto, the local, and the break uh, point tab. And some of the things when you hit the play button and the stop button on the same. So, um, so I'm going to pause the uh, recorder, and I'm saying then we're going to actually see the whole set of code. I don't want to take any time on this thing. I'm going to let you get a chance to take a look at this, and you can type this up as well. Okay. So let me give you a second. If you want to take a look at this code, I'm going to walk you through this code, and if you want to type it up 
um, that's fine with it, but I like to do this less than 10 minutes for this uh, for this part of the video so I can actually stop this thing. Um, you got your, your all your comment out. This is your basically for all of your um, with it, um, all of your header and your documentations with it. Look at my pre-processor. I got IO stream part of the skeleton, the string data type because I'm I'm not actually not using any string data type. So let me just take this one out. I thought I was going to use some string, but no. So this is what I like for you to use is uh, IO stream. Okay. Uh, using namespace std allows you to use see out insertion extractor and, and the um, different inlines and, and all the stuff with it. But look at the main function inside of this thing. You have I've declared as the x data type as an int uh, with a nine decimal as a variable as a float, and then I gave it a, a certain decimal value stores in the variable called decimal. And if you notice again, letter is uh, is a char, and I store it in a, it has to be an apostrophe with it. So each one of these has a size to the same. And then I gave an C out of the content. So this is a string, a literal. It actually, see, this is this variable is this variable. This variable decimal is this variable. This letter is this. As you can see, I click on it. It gives it gives me tells me basically what it is with it. Let's take a look at this, what actually takes place in the memory when you do this thing. Um, what I like for you to do is, if you could for me, um, on this margin over here, you see there's a little gray line over here, a vertical line. So what you can do, there's ways you can do this stuff. So let's say I want to put a break on line 15. Okay, uh, there's so what I can highlight it, I can right mouse click on it, and I select breakpoint. Okay, and it comes over insert breakpoint. I can do that, or I can come over to each of the line numbers to the left of it, like line 16. I click on it. That also puts a little red dot. What this red dot means is when I compile, meaning when I run this program, I'm not. I can't do F Control F5. This is not. You can't do this. You have to hit the play button up here. I'm going to talk to you about that. So I want to put a stop. The program is going to stop here. It's going to stop at line 15, stop at line 16, and I want to actually put line 17 as well. So you can see when I run this, it's going to stop here, stop here in line 16, stop here in line 17. So again, again, you you cannot do the Control F5 on the on your toolbar. If you notice, there's a little play button. Okay, I want to click on that play that play button. All right. It's going to ask me if I'd like to actually build this thing. I'm going to say yes, and we'll let it build. So it pops up that there is a black output window. But look, this is, it's blank. It stops right here. And you notice on the left-hand side over here, I have a little green arrow. In, uh, it's on, on top of that red box, okay, with it. That's all right. I'm going to bump this like that. I'm going to keep that on the side over here so you can see I'm going to Put this one on the side uh, so you can see and I'm going to stretch this out this whole thing up so you can see what I'm doing here all right so you can see both of these things now I'm going to step through this there's three buttons I need to talk to you about and then we, when we talk to part uh, part two about this thing so the first part is if you could just just bear with me on this thing so if you hover on the top over it again this is 2017 the Visual Studio 2017 with this. So I'm going to go over this over here and, and you see the right arrow on the top right here where I'm hovering. There is show next statement. There is step into or F11 or step over is F10 and step out. Now because you haven't done the total package of chapter 6 that we haven't covered which covers about functions and in chapter 6 you talk about writing functions and all the stuff with it that's when you get into stepping into a function and when you call a function or you step out of a function with it so put that in the back burner for me at this time at this time I'd like for you just to use the step next show next statement with this thing so if you look at show next next statement and you do step uh, step into okay so click on no don't do what I did you see what I did I just clicked on it 
if you do get the screen right here, now this is what C++ do. It writes into higher level language. You come up to the upper left hand corner of this here and you see this upper left hand corner. It says navigate backward. Click on it. It takes you back to the code. So if you go, if you happen to click on that variable, that's what it writes to the machine language uh, with it, high level with it. That's okay. But I want you to actually do step out and watch. Okay. So I click on this this one right here. This button has a little dot that says step out. And you notice here there is on the left hand side over here there is a ye yellow dot that says uh, the yellow arrow on top of the red dot and it says the content of x equal. Okay. That's just out output. But look down here in your autos. I want you to look at your autos here. Look at look at this. X as a 9. You assign it as a 9. Look. And look at down here. Look at my cursor. As a 9. Look at my letter name over here. This is my letter is the variable and it has uppercase A and it also has an ASCII value 65 as well. Look at my decimal 5.7 and it gives it as a 5.699999 as a decimal float. This is a float rounding off to the bright precision is 5.7 with us. As you can see, they tell you what they type it as float char int. All right. So bear with me in this auto, okay? And there's also a local, and there's also a call, call stack, and there's point break. The point break that these are the point breaks that tells you where you put your breaks are and tells you what line you put them in uh, with as well. So I'd like to, again, I'm going to come up here, click on the step out one more time. Goes to the next line. Look at this. The moment it goes from line 15 to 16, are you looking at the screen right here, the output screen? Let me output this a little bigger. If you want to change this right mouse click on that on your bar up, up there with it. And you click OK. Can you see it better? So you can see here that I have the content of X is 9. Look at this. This green yellow yellow arrow. Now it's line 16 at past 15. My 15 has gone to 9. And then if I click on one more time, step out, moves it on to 17, it outputs the decimal 5.7. You see how that comes up? And if I did one more, okay, whoops, I did too much. So I come back here, okay. So once I've done that, I did I output all three of the variables with it. I'm basically out. I'm done with it right now, okay. So if you can practice and did what I just did right here. Take a screenshot of this. We just did. This is what I want you to do. Move your screen in a way that you can actually demonstrate what I just did. And all you do is take a screenshot of the whole screen. This is what control alt print screen. Okay. And then just find the section in your lab that I asked you to do this. And you paste it in there. Alright. But for now I have to pause this.